What if I told you that coding was the key to unlocking a world of endless possibilities and financial freedom, but that you didn't need to become a software developer? Because that's exactly what I did, and so did many others who are in non-technical IT jobs, where knowing how to code makes you dangerous and a really valuable asset to employers. Learning to code and then not becoming a software developer opened incredible doors for me. It landed me an almost high school dropout in sunny Australia as a tech expat, taking business class flights and eating $400 sushi. And I don't even like sushi like that. And just so you know, there are countless tech jobs that don't require coding, but are dangerous when you know how to. In this video, I'm going to give you a five point step-by-step -step strategy I wish I had when I was starting out. This is the exact plan I'd follow if I had to rewind time and learn to code all over again. And stick around to the end because I'm going to show you which non-coding IT jobs are the most dangerous when you do know how to code. But first, a quick backstory. Learning to code had been on my bucket list for ages. I've always loved technology and been fascinated by how software powers so much of our digital world. Everything from apps on our phones to the websites to the cars we drive. I wanted to level up beyond just being a user and understand what was happening behind the scenes. Plus, I always dreamed of bringing some app ideas of my own to life one day. So coding seemed like a valuable skill to add to my toolbox. However, my first few attempts of learning, they didn't go so great. Every time I tried one of those learn to code in 24 hour tutorials, I ended up more confused than when I started. The nonstop jargon, and dashboards full of blinking screens. It felt like something straight out of the matrix. Like I ended up more confused and overwhelmed than when I actually started. So I switched gears and took a few entry level college programming courses. They were cool introductions, but moved really slowly and I was impatient. I actually really wanted to just build stuff. So I bought this huge C++ book and tried walking through the chapters methodically, but without structure or anyone to explain the concepts, I just got lost in the weeds. It wasn't until I created a more more thoughtful, strategic approach that things finally started to click for me. Through countless hours of research and connecting with the pros and just lots of frustration, I developed a simple five-step framework. These steps helped me to successfully go from hello world to building real world apps. And my goal is to pass the same knowledge on to you. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear roadmap for learning to code in the most efficient way possible. Now, before we dive in, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more content about launching a career in tech. All right, let's do it. First and foremost, you need a strategic approach. I cannot emphasize that enough. Without a plan, you just bounce around from different languages and platforms and learning methods, and you'll make very little tangible progress. I'm speaking from experience. My first year learning to code felt like aimlessly wandering through a maze, like I needed more structure to ground me. So what should this strategic approach look like? Well, here are three key elements. First, get clear on your end goal. Do you want to work? with websites or mobile apps? Are you intrigued by task automation? Do you find the world of data analytics and AI really exciting? Understanding your purpose and interest areas will inform you about which languages and which focus areas are gonna make sense for you. For example, if your goal is to build simple websites or blogs, JavaScript should likely be your first language. But if you ultimately want to get into machine learning and AI, start with Python. Don't aimlessly try to master everything at once. Next, research Search one to two beginner friendly languages that align with your goals. So like we said, for web dev, JavaScript is incredibly useful. For system automation, it's Python. For mobile apps, use Swift or Java. See what I mean? Pick a lane before zigzagging all over the road. Finally, learn what learning resources are out there. From free online courses to paid boot camps and coding communities, the options can seem endless. Make a list of resources that fit your style, schedule, and budget. We'll explore these more in step two. Does this strategic approach makes sense so far? What are your high level coding goals? Let me know in the comments. All right, with clear objectives outlined, it's time to actually start acquiring coding skills. This brings us to step two, choosing quality learning resources. This was a huge breakthrough on my own journey. Having structured, comprehensive material makes all the difference in your success. Here are some of the best options I've come across. If you're short on cash, free online courses can take you pretty far. Sites like Free Code Camp, Can Academy, and Code Academy offer great foundations foundations. You'll get to build projects and earn certs for your resume. The downside is that they lack support and flexibility in schedule, but hey, 
is free. For more structure and coaching, a multi-month coding bootcamp could be a worthy investment. These intensive cohort-based programs like General Assembly, Full Stack Academy, Hack Reactor run between 10 and 20K, but you get 40 plus hours of material and career prep per week. So the price tag is worth it if you can devote yourself fully. I know people who've landed non-technical IT jobs within months of graduating. Just be ready to put in the grueling hours. As a middle ground, I like books, video courses, and interactive tutorials. Options like John Duckett's books, Scrimba, Udemy, and LinkedIn Learning are reasonably priced and let you learn at your own pace. These are a sweet spot between committing to an intense bootcamp. No matter what resources you choose, hands-on coding experience is critical. You won't become an expert just by watching videos or reading books, which leads us to step number three. To truly master coding, you need to build real projects. Understanding concepts is one thing, but applying them to functional programs is how skills solidify. Start small and focus on ideas that solve actual problems. Projects like a weather tracker, a recipe organizer, to-do lists, or expenditure calculators are all perfect for beginners. Most courses provide prompts and guides to point you in the right direction. And don't wait until the end to start building. Integrate many projects right from the start to stay engaged. Seeing your code come to life is extremely rewarding and practice cements those neural pathways in your brain. Those little app wins will motivate you through the tougher times when you're stuck on bugs. So you might be noticing a bit of a pattern here. Each step builds and expands on the last, propelling you along the coding path. So let's keep moving forward. While solo learning definitely has a place, having a community for support and accountability is game changing, which leads us to step four. Plug into coding communities. For troubleshooting coding problems, forums like Stack Overflow or Reddit are invaluable. Experienced developers share advice to move newbies past common sticking points. There's no need to suffer in silence. There are good communities out there. Another one is to attend local meetups, workshops, hackathons, uh, meeting your peers, in person lets you network, exchange ideas, and also more importantly, which is why you're doing this, find jobs. Even check Eventbrite for coding groups in your city. Follow experts on Twitter or YouTube. Seeing their journey gives you examples to aspire towards. Coding can feel lonely, so look to others for inspiration. All right, so at the home stretch, just one more step left in our coding framework, and it's possibly the most crucial. Step five, is staying committed because learning to code takes patience, discipline, and persistence. No matter how strategic your approach, roadblocks are gonna happen. Here's some tips that I've used to stay motivated. The first one is to reframe your coding challenges as learning experiences, not personal failures. Breakdowns mean your abilities are expanding. It's all a part of the process, which involves just as much debugging and coding. Track your little wins, like getting a section of code to work. Small victories keep you believing more breakthroughs are coming. And remind yourself why you started. Revisit your original goals and the problems that you hope to solve. Your purpose will anchor you through the tough times of learning how to code. And don't forget practical things like taking study breaks, walks, games, calling a friend. Give your mind a chance to break away from what you've been doing, get into new scenery, be refreshed, and then dive back into the coding. So now you've gained skills in coding. Which non-technical IT jobs can you move into and become dangerous? Well, with these skills, you could possibly land yourself in a product management role. Your ability to code can help you better understand the technical aspects of the product being developed. With coding skills, you can dive into developing prototypes and proof of concepts to visualize product features. You can test ideas and get feedback early. Your knowledge of coding can help you assess the complexity and resource requirements, making it easier to prioritize and plan the development roadmap. Or you could take your coding skills and become a QA tester. Your coding skills can help you develop automated test scripts, reducing the time and effort required for manual testing. Or you could even even get into creating custom testing tools and frameworks for your specific projects. You could pursue a job as a DevOps engineer where you'll bridge the gap between development and operations. DevOps engineers use code to automate the CI CD pipelines, enabling rapid and reliable software releases. Cybersecurity analysts find coding skills useful for conducting in depth vulnerability assessments and penetration testing. Security analysts can use coding to automate tasks like log analysis, security scanning, and incident response.
response. Of course, your knowledge of coding is going to help you understand how various types of exploits work and how to defend your company against them. You could enter the exciting world of UX and UI design and user coding skills to create interactive prototypes and mockups that simulate user interactions, providing a more realistic representation of the user experience. Similarly, as a designer, you could contribute to front-end development by coding HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is particularly valuable in smaller teams or startups. Like I said, dangerous. Sales engineers seriously benefit from coding skills. It allows them to create custom demonstrations and prototypes tailored to the specific needs and challenges of that potential client, which could be a really powerful sales tool. Your coding expertise could help you provide in-depth technical explanations and answers to client questions, instilling confidence in the product or the service. So coding skills enable sales engineers to propose and build custom solutions for clients, addressing their unique requirements. How about business analysts? Business analysts can use coding skills in a seemingly endless amount of ways. For starters, you could leverage your coding skills to perform data analysis with Python or R. You could create custom reports, tools, or dashboards. You could do process automation to improve efficiency and reduce manual labor or data entry. You could also get involved in prototyping solutions to validate business requirements. In all of these roles, coding skills empower non-technical IT professionals to bridge the gap between the technical professionals. Your coding skills help foster collaboration, problem solving, and innovation. Whew. Okay, we just cover a ton of ground. And now you know about a few exciting non-developer jobs where coding makes you dangerous. So let's recap the coding approach I wish I had when I first started. The first thing I would do is have a strategic plan, set goals, choose languages, and find resources. The second thing I do is select quality learning materials, courses, tutorials, and boot camps. The third thing would be to integrate real projects. So apply concepts by building apps. So the fourth thing I do is join coding communities, forums, meetups, social media, connecting with the pros in those spaces. And the fifth thing is staying resilient through challenges. So being able to reframe my breakdowns or tough times as breakthroughs. So if I could take this strategy and send it back to myself, it would have saved me so much time and headache trying to figure out how to code. My hope is that it gives you a proven roadmap to learn code the optimal way. Imagine how solid your coding foundation could be in six months, a year, or even two years from now by applying these steps and how rewarding it's gonna feel to have new skills under your belt and finally be able to bring your own app ideas to life. So to wrap this up, hopefully you found it helpful. Let me know your biggest takeaways in the comments. And if you have any questions about getting started, just let me know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notification bell for more videos on launching your tech career. See you in the next video.